most of the kids come down from the Bronx. Probably maybe sixty percent of the kids are from the Bronx. The others are from are from Queens, from Brooklyn. The curriculum we have here is very very challenging, and we expect a lot of them, behavior wise, uh, academically. But there's a strong support system here as well, and I'm a firm believer that middle school is where a lot of doors get open, a lot of doors get closed. If individual problems came up, we tried to link up to certain people who we knew were therapists who could possibly take a kid pro bono. And then the magic was, I think, when we met Carla. Brother Brian was trained as a social worker, which is unusual for a headmaster. And he is very sensitive to the psychological needs of his kids. At De La Salle, we run groups, and this would be for 7th and 8th graders and we also see students individually. The groups are, they depend in size. You could have, I would say, from four to about eight or ten uh, students in the group. And we usually work with a co-leader. Each time we choose one of the stories which emerge, emerges from the groups and then we act out this story. And uh, it is very important that the person who told the story is not acting themselves. Somebody was their mom in the story, so they would say, oh, now I understood how my mom felt. The students were very gifted, I would say, uh, at the, uh, with the defense of intellectualization. <laughs> and so yes. a large part of our work was trying to move them away from intellectualizing mm. to actually owning the feelings. Right. They asked if it would be um, uh, okay if they used racial epithets. And they acted out the, this play and the rage that was expressed was so authentic uh, of, of having been the recipients of these epithets. And then what we would do is sit down and have a discussion that would integrate what happened. But on this occasion, they were actually just very quiet and very uncomfortable. Interestingly, the following week, they came in and they were, you know, just ebullient, really joyful and just ecstatic to see us sitting there. Uh, and I think that experience validated the concept of containment, uh, the notion of a holding environment where they feel safe to express themselves and then to see that they survived. Sometimes events that were, when they're told, quite some, oftentimes even quite traumatic, then they uh, become acted out with a lot of humor, with a lot of satire, with a lot yeah. of caricature. In an analytic way, I would think of it as lifting defense, their defenses. It's interesting because there's like this parallel between what was going on in the group and the playfulness and the yes. jokes and the yes. humor and then yes. it's kind of reproduced in yes. supervision yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. in another we, group. So yeah. we, right. felt, we, felt, well, we felt safe to be open about our own yeah, shortcomings or what, you know, so we could learn. At least for me it was like a first experience with going through all these different uh, uh, f uh, phase stages yeah. in a therapy, like you sure. do the beginning, yeah. and there is a, a middle part, yeah, and yeah. like a working through, and then there is termination, and like yeah. that's yeah. all. And I yeah. remember having that moment. Oh, this is how how it feels, right. and it's it's real, it's, it's it's real, real. and it's something yeah. very different than uh, uh, understanding it cognitively. Right. Right. One of the important aspects of bringing the IPTER and ICC therapists on site to De La Salle is this commitment to making psychoanalytically oriented therapy, what we do here, uh, uh, accessible and available to social groups that uh, would not have access to it otherwise. We explain to the parents, uh, you know, that we have a group system, the kids are working together, and they trust us, okay, and do it. But I think some of them... Uh, I'm unhappy that the kids are seeing somebody individually because the family stuff will come out. It's because those groups are part of the school schedule that um, there's something organic mm -hmm. about the children being able to access mm -hmm. therapy. The support groups then let issues come out okay, and then they will then either talk to the counselor, some kids will ask to talk to the counselor afterwards, yeah, alone, privately. All the groups are in the curriculum, they are voluntary. They apply if they want to uh, uh, do, be part of the group. And virtually everybody wanted to be in the group. Yeah. And, and what's 
really cool, I think, <laughs> is that you actually do see a change. Yeah, right. That's right. In the group. <laughs> That's from true. when we start sure. actually in the yeah. fall and when we end yeah. in June. Absolutely. So you actually see right. that your technique Work. is yeah. kind of working. Right. Right. <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was something very rewarding about that. I think the impact that the groups have had okay, on, on, on the culture here is that uh, it made the kids aware of the circumstances of, the, of, of their peers. Uh, le less judgmental, more understanding, and I, and I think you know, going forward that's a skill set that's going to help them really the, the rest of their life.